Hello everybody, today we're going to take a look at wiring up a Legrand L2130C connector on a piece of 5 conductor 10 gauge wire. Um, this is a pretty standard three phase connector for the entertainment industry. It has uh, three hots, a neutral and a ground, very common for uh, lighting, amp racks, you know, very, very standard entertainment industry kind of stuff. So, um, also has a lot of industrial applications, but uh, I think anybody that watches me knows that all my videos are pretty entertainment industry specific. So, um, before we get started on, uh, on this, I've got my five conductor cable that's sitting over here. Um, I'm gonna put the back end of the connector on. This is just the, uh, the rear part that clamps into this like that. Um, it's a lot easier to do it before you cut the, uh, the cable. So I'm just gonna feed this in here, maybe. There we go. Uh, sometimes this little, little gasket will come out, but that's okay. You can just feed that on. You can feed him back on there when it's, uh, when it's time, so. down there like that. Um, so there's a trick with these connectors. Um, you don't want to cut too much cable at this point. So the magic measurement for that is two and a quarter inches. You take a tape measure and a Sharpie. Just take this back. We'll just mark it at two and a quarter and just try to keep that around here as close as you can. And that'll be our cut line. Um, if you strip back too much of this jacketing, it'll stick out of the, uh, the back of the connector. So um, what I like to do is take this and put it between my, my thumb like this and just take a utility knife and I'm gonna cut inside of this line. And then I'm just gonna very gently rock this like that until the jacketing kind of goes back. And you gotta be careful at this stage because you don't want to cut any of the inner conductors. So I just rock this really gently until it kind of goes back. And then I just keep bending it like this. Um, if you do happen to cut, if you do happen to cut the inner, the inner um, jacketing like that, you do have to start over again. You're dealing with enough uh, current here that you would want to um, be careful. You don't want any of that stuff exposed. So I'm just gonna take a little a pair of uh, cutters here and just cut against this back jacketing like that. There's this little pull wire here. Or this, you know, it's uh, an equivalent of butcher's twine. Most people call it jute. Probably because it is jute, but what is jute? I don't know. Tell me. Drop a comment below. Um, okay. So, this is our last piece here. Oops. Okay. So. So we have our five conductors spread out like this. I'm just gonna take my catapult tool and I'm just gonna cut off maybe a half of an inch. Not quite though, you don't need that much. Something like that. On the ground one, you wanna actually go a little bit shorter. If you can get into a, uh, maybe a quarter of an inch or so, maybe three eighths, you know, just a little bit of a difference like that. The ground um, socket on these is pretty pretty shallow. So I'm just using the uh, 10 gauge spot on my Klein catapult strippers here. Okay, so once we've got our wires stripped back like this, um, we're gonna grab our, our connector here, which is the L2130C. Um, on this one, they made it a little bit tricky. The uh, ground pin here in the center is a flathead to slot. So you need a flathead for this one. You can use a Phillips on the other ones. Uh, so let's start with this, the center one. So let's talk about what the, uh, the conductor colors are here for a second. Uh, green is ground. White is our neutral, which is 
called W on this connector. And then, so let's get these two guys out of the way. Now our three remaining ones, the black, the orange, and the red, these are our hotlines. Um, in a three phase Y configuration, uh, they're generally delineated as X, Y, and Z. I generally like to use black as X, um, red as Y, and orange as Z. It doesn't really matter when you're doing, when you're building a cable, like we're building an extension cord here, so it's gonna have a male end on, uh, on one end and a female end on the other end. So it doesn't really matter as long as your conductors match on each, on each side of the cord. Um, it is wise to follow general wiring protocols, uh, being green, green being ground, neutral being white. Um, just so that if somebody takes your work apart, they're not gonna hurt themselves or do something. Um, always best to, to double check here. Um, if your phases do matter, you know, what, uh, what W or X, Y, and Z are, it's, you know, it, it's gonna matter which way your electrician may need to wire that to make, to dictate which way a motor spins. But for um, this portion of just building a cable, it, it doesn't really matter. You just need to make sure that your colors match. That being said, let's start with our ground here. So I'm gonna flip these cables out. I'm gonna start with my ground, make sure that that's in there. I'm gonna grab my flathead screwdriver, just tighten this. Try to keep this as reasonably straight as you possibly can. You don't wanna put it in as an angle. Get it as tight as you can. Doesn't have to be overly tight, but just tight enough. Okay. So let's uh, let's start with W, which is our ground, which is our white wire here. Stick that in. Oops. Sometimes if uh, you might want to just run your fingers on here like that and straighten it out, just so that there's not any any ends. Oh, this guy needs to be opened a little bit more. Uh, so these screw terminals, it's a good idea to just take your screwdriver and, and turn them all to the left to just make sure that they're in their most open position. Because once you start adding uh, your actual connect, your wires in here, it can kind of get a bit unwieldy. So, okay, so we're gonna start with our W here. This is gonna be our white wire. Just gonna stick that in there like that. And for those of you who don't want to uh, be super bored and watch me wire a, uh, a connector, I'm gonna drop a uh, description below just to give you the pinning and the colors that I'm using so that you don't have to watch this, but hey, maybe it's three in the morning and you don't have anything else to do. Okay, so our W and our W and our ground are in, so I like to use black for X. We're gonna, again, I'm gonna stick that in there. Okay. And you know, cable has a very interesting mind of its own. Sometimes you have to get it in a way that it's gonna wanna behave, so. Sometimes I can keep it in the palm of my hand and sometimes I need to use the table for some leverage. So uh, I'm needing the table on this one. Uh, we're gonna put our Y conductor in, which is red. Okay, and again, I'm just using the table as leverage here. I'm trying to keep my head out of the camera shot. Okay. Okay. And now last we'll use uh, Z for orange. Okay. Okay, so another thing that I like to do is sometimes just if you give it a twist like this, you can get all the cables to uh, very nicely sort of just kind of fall in line. Um, so I'm just gonna bring our 
a little rubber. Now in my application, this is always gonna be indoor. This is just powering a little uh, desktop tester unit that I have. Um, so it doesn't really super need to be in the little channel, but. Um, oh, it should be said, uh, there's a trick for putting these on. Um, if you look between the Y and the X terminals, uh, there's a little, a little flange, a little uh, raised bump right there. There's a guide in the connector chassis that that'll fit into. So right now I'm just spinning my connector chassis until I find the guide. There it is. Um, and then it'll just go right on. Okay. So once that's on, and the first thing that you want to do is tighten these two screws right here. And this mates the connector, connector chassis to the back. And then we'll close this guy up like this. Now style points, everybody that watches my video always, always know that I'm a man, I'm a fan of style points. Style points, you can put a piece of heat shrink back here. Um, so that any bit of exposed wiring is covered. So even at my magic cheater two and a quarter dim, you can still see a tiny bit. You can still see a tiny bit of the wiring right there. Now, if I was making this cable for anybody but myself, I would put a piece of heat shrink there. Oh man, this thing does not want to go on. Oh, our plastic grommet, our rubber grommet is fighting us. Man, I don't know, sometimes these connectors, that, that little grommet stays in place and Sometimes it wants to come out. I really wish they would have a better way of doing that. But alas. So I'm just using my fingernails here to push that back in. Always helpful to have tactical fingernails. They're not long, they're tactical. Okay, so once we put that, uh, put that back in, Put our, oops, wrong side. Put the screws in like this. Okay. So before you get it tightened down too much, I always like to get one started just to make sure that they're both in there. They're both in there, okay. This is always a sign where you, or always a point where you stab yourself in the hand with a screwdriver, so be careful with that. Again, my OCD is kind of bugging me right now because I can see just a little bit of the exposed conductors on the inside. Now, that being said, they're not exposed as in bare copper wire, you can just see them. So my, uh, oh, I can use a flathead on this and say my Phillips head is kind of dull at this point. It's not biting in. So I'm gonna switch over to a flathead screwdriver here just to get a little bit more grip. Okay, this is pretty close at this point. Okay, so this is, this is assembled at this point. So here's here's our finished product here. And again, like I was saying when I was tightening it down, that a uh, little bit of, of exposed, you can see the inner conductors in there. It's not really a huge deal. It's just my, my OCD doesn't really love that. Um, if I was uh, building this cable for somebody else, I would put a piece of heat shrink that all went in there so that you wouldn't see any of that. But uh, again, this one's for me and I just wanted to make a quick video to show how to do this. So. Uh, Thanks for stopping by and uh, appreciate any uh, likes or subscribes.